What's going on everybody? It's your boy Long Island Fish Guy here. Today's video is the April Around the Island update. If you're new to this channel, my Around the Island update is an update of all of my tanks down here in my fish room. I currently have four tanks set up, a 75 gallon uh, planted tank with basically South American fish. In this tank, this is, my, this is that tank. I have a 125 gallon tank with again, South American fish. Uh, mainly cichlids and then i have a 29 gallon what i call south american micro cichlid tank uh i also have a 10 gallon quarantine tank which i have some fun stuff so check that out it'll be the last tank we see in this channel and i also have a five gallon tank upstairs in my room but to dive into this uh here's my 75 gallon right now something that's going on with it is i'm trying to treat with blackbeard algae uh, Blackbeard algae is the algae that you see up here on the top. I'll be coming out with a video soon about how I'm treating this stuff. So here's a really good view of it uh, on this Anubius Nana. Or actually, this is not Anubius Nana. Uh, the, oh, it's Anubius. The Blackbeard algae I got from my local pet store. I don't treat my plants uh, before putting them in the tank. So it's really just, you know, spraying all throughout the tank. But I'm not going to talk too much about that because you'll be seeing it uh, with in a, in a few video in the next near future, I'll put a card up here for anyone who watches after the video is made on the top right hand corner to see that video when it's done. But not much otherwise. Um, since th uh, last video, I actually have uh, rehomed my Jack Dempsey that was in this. I had a male Jack Dempsey that I wanted to re uh, that I wanted to breed with my female. That's in my 125. Thought otherwise, it's not really going to work out. So I actually uh, went ahead and rehomed him. Also, I moved my Green Terror out of this tank and is currently in my 125. So without further ado, let's hop into that 125. All right, guys, here's my 125. That's that South American tank. I moved some plants out of my 29 gallon tank. If you do follow the channel, I'll put another card up on the top right hand corner. Uh, I did a massive overhaul of that tank. It's in my How to Treat the Stones, uh, Aquarium Stones. Uh, that video towards the end, I actually um, you know, showed you how to you know, treat aquarium stones. You see my 75 gallon. I treat, you how to treat, taught you how to treat rocks uh, that you find in the wild in like a park or anything so that they become aquarium ready. Uh, really cool tank. Um, right now there's my green terror he's in the corner he's getting a little bit beaten up in this tank uh but he's a green terror and size wise he's just a little bit smaller than the rest of the fish in the tank not necessarily my oscar sorry for the shaking this tripod i have isn't the greatest and i kind of want to get a good view of here uh the green terror he's a tough fish uh you know they're central american fish so you know typically they're a little bit more aggressive than the south americans at least in my experience and uh, so he, he's going to be fine. He actually has been hiding for the first few days. Uh, this is his, I would say, his third or fourth day. You can see that little scratch right by his eye. That's actually brand new. It wasn't there this morning. But uh, you know, since I've gotten home from work and went to the gym and stuff, he's really uh, settled down also. I feel like a lot of the fish don't really chase him. When he f first two, three days, uh, he was getting chased around the tank a lot. And uh, which is normal for cichlids. Um, you know, they're very territorial fish. That spot right there in the corner is really, uh, really fight, uh, fought amongst with the cichlids that could fit in there. So like that tilapia, the green terror, uh, even that Jack Dempsey, uh, they fight over that one little spot. So all those fish are right now fight all over one spot of the tank. It looks so overcrowded. They have all of this room to be in. Um, also, uh, something to talk about for this tank. Unfortunately, uh, if you saw my last video, my shovel nose lima did not make it. Now, I did say that that shovel nose lima got beaten up. It actually did not get beaten up. So, I... <sighs> How do I say this? So, I have a, a canister filter on this tank. And I was always under the impression that you don't really need to, to look at them that often. I took a look at the canister filter about, I don't know, a month or two into having it, and it was super clean in the tank. So I really didn't you know, think anything of it. I said, okay, 
you know, I also read that you might have to look into them in the first year. So try to make this short as possible. I saw that he was getting sick. My shovel nose Lima, he had a red streak in his fins. Septicemia is what it was. So I did the best I could. I scooped him out of this tank, put him in my 10 gallon quarantine tank. And long story short, he did not make it. Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel, my shovel nose Lima is my favorite fish in this tank or was my favorite fish in this tank. Uh, it's so unfortunate that he died. I'm definitely gonna miss him a lot. And I do plan on getting another shovel nose Lima in the future. Just gonna let some time pass. Uh, it's kind of a rare fish. So, you know, they're not super common, especially here on Long Island, but I'm gonna, you know, hold off. Really try and wait to see if I get like a really nice one uh, to get into this tank. I got this shovel nose Lima when it was literally probably about an inch big. And if you remember from my old videos from my long time subscribers, when I first got this 125, I, uh, I had a Jaguar in here. And when I first put the shovel nose in, he kept going after him and after him and after him. So I moved him into my 10 gallon and I really grew him out nicely. And that's when he really became one of my favorite fish because it was almost like a wet pet to me. Uh, so it's really unfortunate. It really was upset. You know, I don't want to you know put it to the same standard as like losing a dog or something like that, but it really is upsetting to me. It was definitely my favorite fish. So septicemia, yeah, I cleaned out my canister filter and I definitely, it's its a learning experience. Uh, and that's what this hobby is all about. I could have easily not just said, oh yeah, my shovel nose died and it was my lowest Ellie's fault. But, you know, I don't care if you're in this hobby for six months or six years or 60 years. Uh, we're all still learning, you know, about fish shanks and, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, this shovel nose and is going to, you know, it taught me something, you know, for the rest of my fish keeping life that, uh, you know, first of all, I know now I know what septicemia is. And I also, you know, will check up on my filters regularly because I now know the negative effects of it. Also having extremely high nitrates. Uh, also, I didn't really explain what septicemia is. Septicemia is basically a blood disease that you would get from poor water quality or from high uh, nitrate level. Now, I kind of pride myself on how well I keep, keep, keep these tanks. I do water changes once a week about 50% uh, one week and then every every other week I do 50% and then the other week I do uh, about 20%. And it's basically what I did was I just basically took fresh clean air and left poop in the air and that air just got bad quick. So it's a learning experience. Uh, that's all we're gonna cover for this tank. I spoke about this tank probably for a little bit too much, but uh, we're gonna move on to my quote unquote nano uh, 29 gallon tank. All right guys, so here is the 29 gallon tank. Uh, in regards to updates on this tank, I had to move all of my uh, fish that were in quarantine a little bit early uh, out of that, that my quarantine tank because of my shovel nose. So well, I added two epistogrammas, agazagis in this tank. Uh, they were actually sick at a pet store and I made a pretty nice deal on them, so. So when win, uh, I got sick fish, but you know treated them. I wasn't really sure what was wrong, but I treated it with Paragard and it worked out. Uh, also, I have my green Severman there. Uh, that's on the left. I'm gonna grow him out in this tank. Ultimately, I'll probably add him to my 125. And that's about it for this tank. Uh, it's pretty cool. I do wanna move this green Severman out of here pretty quickly though. Um, I'll probably have to actually finish growing him out in my 75. I just wanna kinda leave him in this tank for maybe another two weeks, bulk him up a little bit, just so he can really uh, you know, stand a chance. Well, he's not gonna necessarily die in the 75, but uh, you know, he might get picked on a little bit. Uh, in regards to other fish in this tank, my keyhole cichlids recently have been displaying a little bit of breeding behavior. Uh, so I'm not really sure. I think I might have a male and a female. So I might have some breeding in here. I have a night, those rocks in there for them to maybe lay eggs on. Uh, we'll see. Overall, with the design of this tank now, I'm super happy with it because I now get to see a, a great uh, view of these fish in this tank. As this bamboo shrimp here is like looking upside down. So cool. I love these bamboo shrimp. I have two of them in this tank. 
Uh, one of them is like about brown color and one's like a little bit of a red color. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, what I was saying before is the the severum in this tank is really destroying the plants in here because they eat both, uh, you know, meaty type foods like pellets and they also eat, uh, you know, plant like matter. So they're omnivores, omnivorous fish. I'm trying to look for one of my epistogramas because they're really cool fish. They're very juvenile right now. I, again, I just read it. There's my epistogram right above my oblivion ram there. They're not the greatest looking fish right now, but as they get older, they only get better looking, and especially the males. Uh, I kind of hope I have one male, one female. That would be super cool to breed epistogrammas in this tank, uh, or in any tank. I would definitely go out of my way to try to breed them. I'd even separate them, put them in their own dedicated tank to breed, uh, just because, and there's the other epistogram over there. Just because they're super cool and you can also make a pretty penny for them. Move, angelfish, move. Um, they're super small. They get to be about the size of a Bolivian ram. So they'll max out at about two inches or so, um, give or take. You know, females obviously stay a little bit smaller than the males. But uh, overall, in this tank, I'm super happy. Uh, I, this is, you know, I, I really have to say all my tanks are like my favorite tanks, but this is truly like one of my favorite tanks. Um, I always like to come over, not necessarily now with the stocking. I do, it's a little bit on the overstock side for my liking. Uh, but when I, I moved that Severum out of here, um, and also in regards to long-term goals, uh, I want to be able to start transferring fish as, and granted it's, it's in the hobby. You know, fish die, just things happen in the tank, uh, either due to, you know, the genetics of the fish, just not the greatest coming from local, you know, big pet, big chain pet store, um, or just mistakes made, just like how I did with my shovel nose lima. I thought I'd have the fish for 10 years, but I didn't. Uh, you know, as fish, you know, unfortunately die, or I need to rehome fish or something along those lines. I want to make my 125 a more so a big fish tank, or a big fish. So fish I get to be anywhere bit like north of six inches i want my 75 gallon to be replicated as this tank here cichlids that stay small under six six inches or any fish that stay under six inches it's just so i can build a nice big landscaped community-esque micro tank that's like my ultimate goal i can't really get any more tanks down here uh but i, I do think that i can you know start transferring fish in, in the long term having it work out uh, and then this tank I could have some fun with. Uh, I can make this more of a community-like tank and, you know, have absolutely no cichlids in here. I can make this a brackish tank. Or I can make this like a species-only tank where I put, like, one nice cichlid in here. Now, I'm not saying necessarily flower horn, but something like a flower horn. You know, something that would stay small and it would be like a wet pet. That's probably the where I'm leaning most. Uh, you know, even maybe like a puffer fish. Uh, that would probably be, like, really cool. Uh, but again, that's going to be it for this 29 gallon. And for my last tank, this is super special and super cool. Uh, so you don't want to skip ahead here or miss out on anything. Now, this is my 10 gallon quarantine tank. I have here roughly, I didn't have, I don't have an exact count, but I believe I have 20, uh, geophagus. Pellegrini. Tank's a little bit dirty just because I didn't really clean it up that well. Um, I kind of got home from a fish auction yesterday at my aquarium club I go to. I go to um, an aquarium club, the Nassau County uh, Aquarium Society, I think is what it's called. Uh, it's at Malloy College and it's, you know, it's second Tuesday of every month. And yesterday I went to the auction and picked up these guys for $10, $10. Now these fish in the hobby are, first of all, super uncommon and don't really go for $10 for 20 fish. So uh, I'm, you know, these are little fry here. Um, I've never really had fry before. I've had guppy fry, um, but <laughs> because I had them in a quarantine tank, they all got eaten, which was okay. Um, I kind of wanted to breed for that reason only, but I'm super excited for these fish. Um, I'm going to try and keep these as long as possible. 
or as keep as many as long as possible. Um, I, I don't have the tanks to keep 20 of these fish, so I'm gonna have to rehome them somehow, give them to friends or any of my Long Island YouTubers. Um, if any of you guys are watching this and are interested in any of these fish, definitely reach out to me. Um, or even any of my subscribers, um, if you want any of these fish, and you know, I'd have no problem as these guys get a little bit older, uh, you know, sending these out to one of my subscribers. Um, so yeah, I'm just super excited. I really want to see the growth of these guys. Um, I have Geophagus Stein Daiquiri, the red humps, in my 75 gallon. They are a you know a, a generation away from these guys, like a, a species away from these guys. So I think they'll interact really well. Uh, in that community-esque tank, uh, 75 that I want to aim, these guys would definitely fit in there perfectly. Uh, they're a little bit on the bigger side in regards to being a community fish, but behaviorally, they'll definitely fit in there well. As long as the fish isn't big enough to fit in their mouth, they'll be fine. So I already ha currently have three red hump geophagus in there in my 75, this Dindacari. I could probably add another three of these guys in there. And my 125 could always you know, use some fish. So even if I want to take some of these guys and add them to my 125 i could always go ahead and do that as well but you're not going to want to miss these guys grow up it's definitely going to be super cool um it's just incredible i really do enjoy these guys so far i've only had them for a day but they're super cool they're super energetic and i really can't wait to see them grow and if you can't wait to see them grow make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, I'm super shocked at how fast my channel has been growing in the past few months. Um, and it's all natural. I'm not really doing anything proactively to grow it. Uh, I believe it's all content based. So uh, I've really been trying to make the best videos as possible, as well as, you know, giving stuff to my subscribers, like the videos like this. So if you like my tanks, uh, if you saw like what you saw today, again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think about the tanks in the comment section below. Let me know if you want to have any of these guys, because I have no problem giving these to, your, to my subscribers. Maybe if I hit 100 subscribers, I, right now I'm at like 83. If I hit 100 subscribers, I'll give two of these guys away. How about that? Um, so yeah, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's going to be it for this one. For our next Around the Island update, it's going to happen in May, 20 days from now. But that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to say that for the last time. Peace out, everybody.